So I have a GTX 1080 here that I will be taking apart to apply the EVGA hybrid kit. This is the Founders Edition reference cooler. Uh, ran extremely hot, which is why I decided to go for water cooling. So the first thing I'm going to do is take apart the back panel. And to do that, there are 13 or 14 small screws. So you're gonna need a uh, very small Phillips head. So now that that's done, uh, there are two larger screws on the side here that we're going to want to take out. I would say there are about three different types of screws. Uh, there are a small Phillips head, a larger Phillips head that you'll be needing, and a four millimeter socket driver or hex driver if you will. I have uh, I have two here. I will have one by hand and then the other one um, to provide a little bit more torque on it because they are very difficult to put in once you get to the actual EVGA cooler itself. Um, so there are uh, just the same number of um, nuts that you will need to take out from the back here. So I'm going to use um, a socket wrench to loosen up these bolts, as some of them are very difficult to get off, some are not. So one of the things I noticed in the instruction manual was it stated that you could use tweezers uh, or a 4mm um, socket. I highly recommend the 4mm socket. I would not recommend using tweezers on this. Um, there are several posts that I saw online of people slipping with the tweezers and actually knocking off capacitors in the back of their board. So, after you get those out, the next thing you will want to do is put the larger Phillips head back in. And there are two screws on the front here. Um, you're going to want to take the, the larger of the uh, screws out. So, this one and this one. So we'll take care of those. All right, so after you get those out, um, notice that there are smaller screws that are still here um, above the uh, DVI and HDMI ports. You can leave those in. Those are part of the, um, those are part of the bracket itself and the bracket will stay. The next thing we want to do is take the screws that are holding the heatsink onto the actual GPU itself. Uh, I recommend doing a star pattern, so when you take off one screw, you'll go to the adjacent screw, take that off, and then you go to the, go to another one. They have little springs, so be careful that they don't spring up on you. So that's it. Um, let me do one final check here. So we have those two screws out. We have everything else. We have the smaller hex screws out. We also have the heat sink screws out. And then it should be just a simple game of doing a little bit of a little bit of gentle prying to get this off. And it'll come off. However, there are two things I should warn you. There are going to be two wires on the back of the card that you can see here. One is for the fan, one is for the LED. Um, it's easier to take out one and then the other. Uh, I have always done the fan, so there's a fan part back here that you can kind of you can kind of wiggle out if you can get one of your one of your fingernails underneath of it and just kind of kind of wiggle it out. It takes a little bit, but you get it. All right. And then you have the LED one. It's a white one. It has two wires and same thing, just wiggle that out. And there you go. And there is the heat sink and blower system that it was on your GTX 1080. So the next thing that I I'd recommend is there is there should be a little bit of uh, 
thermal compound on the die of the GPU, so very gently just kind of rub it off. It, it should still be um, somewhat pliable, uh, unless you're doing this later on in the uh, in the life cycle of the 10 series. So I'll put this off to the side, and this will be the unboxing of the water cooler. So here is the, the new shroud that you'll be putting on, as well as the new fan. I will unpack that shortly. These are the instructions. They're not going to make any sense at all. That's why I'm making this video. Pull this part out. And below, you have the, the pump and the reservoir with the fan attached. So we'll put these off to the side for now as we don't we don't need them particularly yet. And then it also inside are some screws. that's aftermarket. Let's see here. So you unpack it and we have the the shroud that will go on top. When you take it out you'll notice it's wrapping around it. Um, I will show you later that you'll want to take this off before you actually install it as some of the some of the, the, the wrapping can get caught underneath some of the screws. It'll be very difficult to pull out. And then underneath here we have the the heat sink for everything else on the on the 1080 as well as the fan. So I'm gonna run the fan plug up and out. That way I can I can deal with it later. So you want to place it on there. It's it's very difficult to kind of it's very difficult to get it in a in a um, in a wrong position as it kind of just fits where it needs to go. What we'll want to do is we'll take these hex screws and we're going to want to put them back in through here. I will just start and start at the beginning, put them through, and then work my way down the board. You also want to make sure that your holes are lined up because the there's a bit of a round edge right below the, the nut that goes through the board itself. It kind of acts as a placer, and if this is off by, if the heat sink is positioned incorrectly on the board itself, it's gonna make installing it very difficult. So the only other thing I notice is that the, the nut themselves are very difficult to get in. So don't be afraid to apply a little bit of pressure, but don't put too much pressure or you'll strip it or break it, and that's, that's not good. So the next thing is you'll want to put your bigger Phillips head in and we're going to put the two screws back in here. So hopefully you remembered which ones those were. If it helps, they're shiny. That's in place. So the next thing we need to do is I believe prepare the water cooler. It's a lot of fun. So before we start, there are a couple of things that we should go over. So in this packet of goodies, there is a rubber piece in one of the bags. It's got two little things for um, the tubes to go out, and that's going to go right in front here. Just kind of goes right in place, like so. And then, we're going to take the pump, unwrap it, and there are a couple of recommendations I would make before taking off the plastic piece here and, and 
putting it on. So one of the things that you're going to want to keep in mind is that there is there's a wire that has a splitter on the end so you can see that there is a uh, there are two connections on here and I would recommend running that underneath the pump and that'll go over here and connect over here we'll deal with that later the second recommendation is that the actual hookup for the fan that goes to the fan on the radiator there's a little spot in between the two on the rubber part there's a little spot a little little indent right here right there uh, tube tube this is where the wire for your fan is going to go at this point in time I'm going to take the plastic piece off and then kind of situate everything where I have my pump connection running underneath the tubes and then I have my reservoir fan wire going right in between the two tubes and then I'm gonna there are little posts that stick up out of here that'll go right into the right into the holes for the pump itself so it, it really won't move once you place it in there so you have a little bit more time to kind of play with some things. I have my fan flyer going between the tubes and then I have my pump fan going underneath the tube itself. Here comes the tricky part. So while holding this, while applying pressure, you're going to want to turn it over. And then so your holes should line up through here so you'll want to take your spring screws and carefully apply those in now I have a much larger screwdriver so I can apply a little bit of force onto these so you want to use a Phillips head one on here. Careful not to over tighten, they were never tightened from the factory, so it would be best if you don't do that now. And just like that, your pump is installed. One of the biggest challenges that I found with this with this install is that there's not a lot of room over here around the fan for these wires to go. So you'll have your fan wire and you'll have your pump wire all running off the same one. So that's what the splitter is for. You'll plug the fan wire that's attached to the heatsink itself into the male end of the splitter, like so. to plug this part into down here. Just be careful that you, uh, if you intend to use a screwdriver to push this down in, that you don't miss. One of the best things that I found is that this conveniently fits right over here. Look at that. What a deal. Also something I should mention is that underneath the shroud itself you'll see that there's like a wall that protects the fan so the wires are going to go in between here and wrap around here so there is a bit of space for the wires. We're going to be ready to put the shroud on. Now that that's off, 
you'll have your nice clean shroud. Um, so there is a, there is a two wire LED cord for the VGA hybrid light that shows up here. You're just gonna plug that in. There's a, um, plug that into the LED part that you unplugged it from earlier. It's a little bit difficult to get to, but there you go. It just kind of clicks into place. So, running the wire along the outside of the wall here, it's actually fairly easy to do that. You just kind of make sure that everything is on the outside when you do that. And, uh, if you don't hear any wires and you know that you're clear, um, just to kind of keep the wires in place, I'd recommend uh, putting the Phillips head screws in the back first. In one of these bags, you're gonna find a set of small, shiny Phillips head screws. Um, these screws kind of have a little bit of soft metal to them, so they can easily be stripped. I would recommend making sure that you have the right amount of tools. These, these should screw in very easily. There's no resistance to them. So there are three on the top. And then there are a few spots on the bottom. There are three. Okay, so the shroud is connected. I think I have all these screws in. Uh, yep. Give the fan one final spin. I'm not hearing anything. And then you'll want to plug in the radiator fan into the wire here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and then finish the rest of this. I like to have the back plates on, so I'm going to put those back on. Um, you'd probably be okay if you didn't, but I'd highly recommend it as it gives it a little bit of a more professional look. Now that that's done, the next thing you'll want to do is one of these screws that we took out from the bigger screws in the back here, you want to put one of those back in. The back plate that EVGA gives does not have a screw hole over here, so if you put the screw in, it's just going to sit there loosely. Just kind of make sure that we can you know, tighten these up without, without stirping them. We're good to go, and that is the installation of the EVGA hybrid cooler. Good luck.